Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my shop. Uh, this is final video of this series. This is uh, video number four and I'm going to walk you through you guys how I did the drawers, did the cabinet pulls, um, pretty much everything that was uh, left to complete. I'm going to show you guys how I did it so you can see it's kind of finished behind me. So um, again, guys, if you've been here for the first three series, thank you so much um, and I'm pretty happy that this is the final build so uh anyway guys without further ado i'm going to get started showing you guys how i completed this sys board thanks okay everyone welcome back to part four of my sys port build i wanted to to make this video to really kind of go into detail how to lay out and measure multiple drawers in a large single opening when i first started out you know measuring a single uh, a drawer for a single opening is really easy because you have a reference line. You have a bottom of the shelf to figure out where to put your hinges. Where it gets a little uh, confusing is when you have one large opening and you want to put multiple drawers into one opening. So I've come up with a solution that works for me. There's prob there, there are many other ways you can go about doing this. You can use computer software programs to figure out. But I don't do any of that. I want to show you guys how I do it and how it works for me. So the first thing that you have to do is figure out your dimensions from top to bottom. In my case, I've got 39 and about an eighth of an inch. I want six drawers. I divide that by six, which gives me roughly like 6.53. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to say six and a half inches. Rough, but it's going to be close enough. So that means every six and a half inches, I'm gonna make a mark. So I've got a little white charcoal pencil and I've made a mark. This I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a long line and that represents every six and a half inches. That is going to give me six openings. Then, I've already installed these bottom hinges. Did it the same way, I've got a piece of three quarter inch stock. I put my, my slides on top of that three quarter inch stock and I've already uh, affixed them to the sides of the, of the cabinet. So. That's out of the way. So what I have to figure out now is this six and a half inch line, in my mind, kind of represents an imaginary shelf. So effectively, I'm creating six individual drawer openings, okay? It just helps me out in my mind. So when I have all of my six lines drawn, I know that if I want to install hinges in the same spot, up this whole cabinet, I still need to raise it up another three quarters of an inch because these bottom hinges are also raised up three quarters of an inch. So what I do then is I make a mark three quarters of an inch up on every single one of my first lines that I measured that was again six and a half inches. So I've got two lines going up this side of the cabinet. I've got my six and a half inch mark that depicts my imaginary shelves then I've got a three quarter inch mark above each one of those lines. That's gonna depict where I'm gonna put the bottom of my slides. So what I do is, is I, I cut a spacer block. So with these spacer blocks, all you have to do is put these spacer blocks on top of your hinge that's already installed. Then you're gonna take your slide and you're gonna put it right on top of, that, of, of these spacer blocks, okay? then you'll drill in those slides and you just keep going up the whole way so once that this slide's installed take this spacer block put it on top put your next hinge on top of that spacer block okay that's how i do it that's how i found it it's the easiest and works the best for me so i'll go ahead and get all six of these installed in this in this uh space then i'll build the drawers and i will show you how because you're going to have to mark your drawers to know where to put the side of your slides on your drawer so they still all line up perfectly. Okay, so we got all of the drawer slides installed uh, using the, the spacing method that I described. So now we're just gonna figure out again, how wide do I need to cut the front and the back of the drawers? So since I've got both slides installed, I'm just gonna take again two more scraps of my drawer box material. I'm going to place it against one side I'm going to take my bar gauge. Okay, how to shorten up the bar gauge. So I'm going to take the bar gauge. Okay, 
so now I know that the distance between this end and this end is going to be the width of the front and the back of my drawer. So let's get those knocked out. All right, so now we are on to dominoing the drawer boxes. And yes, it's cold in this garage. It is it is 18 degrees right now. Got down to zero last night, so this is something we're not used to. It's very cold. But um, I'm going to show you guys how I, again, how I kind of construct these, these drawer boxes using dominoes. But I wanted to kind of go over my domino setting, what size dominoes I'm going to be using. So for all of my three-quarter material, I use 5 by 30 dominoes, 5 millimeter by 30 millimeter dominoes. Anything bigger, you really risk uh, going through the three-quarter inch material. So five millimeters, pretty, a pretty good bet. So as far as depth setting, I am using 15 millimeters. So it's going to be plunging in. The tip of the cutter head is going to be plunging in 15 millimeters. So when I go to put in my 30 millimeter long domino, I'm going to have half of it remaining to put in the joining piece. And also the, what I wanted to show you guys is... And most of you that have dominoes probably know this, but the dominoes have little uh, pegs that act as reference stops. So you really don't have to measure anything if you just want to reference off the edge of a board. From the inside of this stop to the center of the cutter head is 37 millimeters. So if I were to use these stops, it's going to put the two domino holes, the mortise holes, on my five and a half inch material real close together, right in the center of the board almost. And I don't want to put them there, I want them more further out on the edges of my board. So I use the vertical support that you can get for the domino. And it comes with these extra little flip stops that you can see here, so I can flip both of these up. And what this does is from the inside of this flip stop to the center of the cutter head is now 20 millimeters. So if I use this instead of what's already on the domino, these little uh, push down stops, if I use these that are on the vertical support, I only come in 20 millimeters from the edge of the board now instead of 37. So if I use these, it puts the mortises out further to the edge. Um, I'll show you guys when I'm done what that kind of means, but that's why I'm using this vertical support. So I'm gonna turn on my Vaxxis, turn down the volume on the mic, and get started knocking out these door boxes. Okay, and one, one other thing to note that I did not mention is that I'm using the tight setting on every single mortise on the sides and the front of the drawer box. One of the other thing I wanted to show you guys is, is that if you can see how these mortise holes are closer to the outside edges, that's because I use these flip stops on the vertical support, these guys right here. If I didn't use that and I use what comes on the domino, these mortise holes would have been much closer together on the, in the center of the board, which I don't want. I want my support to be out closer toward the edges. So let's get these drawers put together. Got six of them to do, and then I'll show you guys how to install the, the drawer runners and get them installed evenly spaced. So lay down my quarter inch spacer. Squeeze this drawer in there. Slowly pull it out to get these slides to come with it. There we go. Make sure it's sitting sitting flat on these spacers and it doesn't kind of kick up a little bit in the back. Gonna use a block to make sure that that drawer runner is flush to the front of the drawer box. And we're gonna go ahead and take this box out because I'm gonna need to use it as a reference anyway for the, for the drawers above it. And we'll go ahead and install that third hole while we have, go ahead and have the box drawer out. Make sure everything 
Fits good. Good to go. All right, so let's talk about how I determined where to put my drawer slides on the other, the top five boxes after I've installed. This is the first box that I installed. I removed it because I'm going to use where these slides are as a reference to determine where to put the rest of my slides on the corresponding drawer boxes. So to do that, guys, all I do, and sorry, this box is kind of dirty from the domino, but I take the center line of this entire slide. So the center line of where all of these mounting locations are, all of these pre-drilled holes in the slide, I take the center of that and I make a mark out here. I hope you guys can see where that mark is, but there is a mark. So that is the center line of my drawer slide, okay? Then I take my uh, Paolini pocket uh, rule or whatever you want to use to measure, and I'm going to reference off the top of my drawer box. You can measure from the bottom, but I, I'm just choosing a measure from the top. So I will take a measurement from the top of my drawer box to, the, to where the center of this drawer slide is. I'll tighten this down and I'll keep this measurement. Then what I'll do is, is I'll take this measurement and correspond to every other drawer box and make a line and that's where I know where to put my slide. Let me show you what I mean. So this is my fifth drawer box, fifth from the bottom. This is the front, this is the back. So I'm gonna turn it on the side and I'm gonna take my Paolini pocket rule that I have a set measurement on that I referenced off the first drawer box that I installed the slides with. And with this being the front, I'm gonna go ahead and just mark where that measurement is. And I'm just going to kind of continue down the side of the of the drawer box. And just to help me out, I like to put a, a square on it and just make a long, just connect all these lines. So this line represents the center of the drawer slide. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this runner, I took it off of the hinge I keep saying hinges, guys. I'm sorry. I took it off of the of the slide in the cabinet, and I'm going to lay this in the front. Remember, this is the front, and I'm going to line up this line with the center of all of these pre-drilled holes in this slide. And again, I'm going to make sure that I'm on the front. I'm going to push up this slide against the front. And I'm going to line everything up, and once I have it in place, once this is exactly where I want it to be, I'm going to take my fix bit and I'm gonna start pre-drilling some holes okay so doing it this way ensures that now this is the original drawer box this slide is the same distance or is in the same spot on the drawer side as the original drawer that I put in. You know, that the very first one that I put in on the bottom, I lifted it up a quarter of an inch to give it clearance on the bottom. I installed it the, the, the way that I've done all the other drawers on here, but I took it out and I could get a reference measurement off of this particular slide that I could then transfer to every other drawer. So I can put my original drawer away now. And again, so this is, this is gonna be one of the sides and I'm gonna just do the same thing for the other side. And that is how you install drawer slides in a big open area, the same distance on every single drawer box. It's, it, that's how I do it. That's how I think it's the easiest. Um, I've had the best luck with this method. So let's go install the first drawer that I put in and then this on top of it and I'll show you guys that it works. Okay, so here is the first drawer box. And here's the second one. That we're going to install now. And there you go. I'm just going to do that same thing for the next four drawers and this thing will be finished.
Okay, so now let's talk about how you measure and cut out your drawer fronts. So all you're gonna do is take your opening dimensions, which in my case, my width is 23 inches from here to here, and my height is six inches from here to here. I want an eighth inch reveal once I put my drawer front on. So I'm going to subtract a quarter of an inch on both measurements so that I can essentially cut that in half and it'll give me an eighth inch on each side. So with this being 23 inches, I'm going to cut my, my drawer front to 22 and three quarters of an inch. And for the height, I'm going to cut it to five and three quarters of an inch. That'll give me an eighth inch gap once I get it put on to shim it and be able to maintain that eighth inch gap all the way around. Okay, so I got my drawer fronts cut. I'm gonna go ahead and run these through my little tiny benchtop rockler mini router table type thing. It actually comes in really handy, I like this. Very small, simple setup. And I'm using a white side quarter inch uh, 45 degree chamfer bit. And I'm just gonna go put a little 45 on all of the, the outside edges of my drawer fronts. If you're new to this, just remember to always do your ingrain first, then come back around, do your long side, then your ingrain, then long side. That'll help prevent tear out over here on the on the ingrain corners. So just a little tip. All right, so there's all four drawers. Got the edges routed. Um, guys, you need to try out these white side router bits. They're the best I've ever used. I've used Rockler, Diablo, CMTs, and these white side bits cutting through butter. I mean, this is just pine. Granted, it's not hardwood, but uh, I mean, these th these white side bits just put a, an amazing cut on this pine. I, I, I really, really recommend these white side bits, guys. These are really, really nice. So anyway, I'm going to get this sanded down, get it ready for paint, and then we will go knock out the six smaller drawer fronts as well. All right, so I got all four drawer fronts cut for the top two and the bottom two, and I wanted to go ahead and get these cut out so I can get them all painted at one time. So let me tell you guys how I decided on, on the measurements for the drawer fronts for these. So I got my notepad here because there's quite a few numbers to remember. So first thing, obviously measure the total area top to bottom, which in my case is 39 and an eighth inches. For my drawer fronts, I want an eighth of an inch gap all the way around. It's the same as the top two and the bottom two bigger drawers. So that means I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gaps that I need to be an eighth of an inch. So that's seven eighths of an inch. I subtract that from 39 and an eighth inches. That gives me 38 and one quarter inch total drawer height. If you add them all together, that's 38 and a quarter inches. Divide that number by the number of actual drawers, which is six. That gives me a total height that I need to cut my drawer fronts to. That's gonna equal six and three eighths of an inch. If I cut them six and three eighths of an inch high, that's gonna give me an eighth of an inch gap all the way up to the top. Width-wise is the same. So I think I've got 13 and three quarters of an inch from here to here. I'm gonna subtract a quarter of an inch off of that so I can have an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch here gap. So that's going to give me 13 and one eighth inch wide. That's kind of the basic premise of how you can do your arithmetic to determine what size to cut your drawer fronts. So I'm going to get these all knocked out get everything painted. We're going to come back get them all installed and this will finally be a wrap. All right, so we are finally on to installing the drawer fronts now. Seems like it's been forever, but uh, last couple of days has been a little off here in Texas. We kind of been shut down. We were in a, in a deep freeze. But anyway, um, I'm going to show you guys how I install these drawer fronts. It might be a little bit of an unconventional method. I actually use playing cards um, to get my 1 8 inch gap all the way around. It's just the easiest that I find. I don't have any 8 inch shims. So I just use playing cards. I am currently waiting on the, the, the drawer pulls for the paint to dry. So I got some green drawer pulls that I'm going to affix, but I'm gonna show you guys how I install the drawer fronts to the drawer box and use the holes and I'm going to affix this to the drawer box, use those as the actual holes to affix my drawer pulls. So it's kind of a two in one deal. So I'm gonna put the camera back and let you guys kind of see how I do this. So I just get my drawer front. I got the holes pre-drilled. So I just kind of lay it up here 
and then in my case, 10 playing cards equals an eighth of an inch. So I put, kind of try to put 10 on one side, 10 on the other, snug it down, make sure that the, the, the drawer's touching and pressing down these cards. Then I'm gonna put 10 on this side, and then 10 on this side. And once that looks good, I can go ahead and kind of do a temporary attachment. Okay, take the cards out. And now I'll pull it out just a little bit and I'll actually start attaching it from the inside here. And final one in the center. And that's all she wrote. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep this in here until I install the, the drawer slides. But that's how I affix my drawer fronts to my drawer box and make sure that I maintain that eighth inch gap all the way around. All right, we are at the finish line finally. So what I'm gonna show you guys now is how do I how I installed these uh, these drawer pulls. So all I did was take my three quarter inch material and I ripped an inch strip and then I put a little, uh, used a cove bit to kind of create a little finger choil underneath to be able to pull out. Simple as can be, nothing fancy at all. And if you can notice, these screws that I attached drawer front with, I have removed since I've already come from underneath and actually affix these drawer fronts from inside. So I, I, I re removed those two screws and these holes are what I'm going to use to attach these drawer pulls to. So I'm just going to use some two inch number eight screws come in from behind and attach these. Simple as can be. So I'm going to go run down and install eight more of these drawer, drawer pulls and we will be done with this build. All right, guys, it is finally finished. So got everything done. Um, for those of y'all that were around for all four of these series, I appreciate it. It was, it was pretty fun. I didn't anticipate it, uh, taking a full four series, but I wanted to kind of go into as much detail as I could. So anyway, guys, this is it. So just a lot of storage and a lot of place to put all my sustainers. Um, I think it turned out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the colors, but, um, you know, that's all it is. So it's still pretty cold here, so I'm not going to be able to move out my Husky into the other garage yet. So this is going to stay here for right now. But um, anyway, guys, that is my version of a mega sys port for all of my sustainers. So hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for the comments, for the banter back and forth. And uh, we will see you again on the next bill, shop talk, tool review, whatever it might be. So anyway, guys, take care. Thanks.